Hey guys, it's Arthur Frozen here. I'm the real reason. I am the true mastermind behind the Frozen's wrongdoings. Fr the real Frozen never actually did anything wrong. And I know he deserves a fan base, but I uh, just uh, sabotaged uh, his uh, reputation and I made him, uh, made everybody hate him. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Frozen Wish to use here, and welcome back to another movie review. And today, I'm going to be doing a review on Coraline. Yes, guys, uh, it's been long overdue now uh, because I was supposed to review this last uh, Thursday or Friday. So let's get into it. So Coraline is the first installment in uh, the. It is the very first film created by Laika, the, the, the greatest uh, stop motion anime studio of all time, period. And it's uh, directed by uh, the uh, stop motion legend Henry Selick, uh, the uh, greatest uh, stop motion artist of all time, who you may know uh, also uh, worked on uh, the, Nightmare, the Nightmare Before Christmas. And it came out in the year 2009, which. Uh, Many people consider it to be one of the greatest for animation. Although I, I uh, personally disagree, uh, that would go to 2023. And even when it comes to the 2000s, uh, I would favor 2002 over 2000, 2001 and 2002 over 2009. And it stars Dakota Fanning, Terry Hatcher, Jennifer Saunders, Don French, Keith David, Ian McShane, John Hodgman, Robert Bailey uh, Jr., et cetera. And so the film uh, tells the story of uh, eleven year old of an eleven year old girl named Coraline who uh, recently um, moves into her her new home, uh, and and yeah, and her new home is apparently boring according to her. Uh, she uh, does not like her new home, her new home because uh, it it is an, an absolute mess, and she also has a very poor relationship with her uh, with her uh, mom and dad, uh, Mel. Uh, Mel Jones and Charlie Jones, uh, and yeah, yeah, she pretty much uh, hates her life uh, right now, and and even she even has you know, a, a neighbor uh, named uh, YB or Yborn, which uh, yeah, wh whom uh, Coraline hates, uh, and and yeah, but one day Coraline uh, discovers a, a, a hidden door inside a house uh, that that leads her on a path to um, a. Uh, Fant fantastical uh, version of, of, of her uh, life uh, and yeah she uh, pretty much and, and, and she actually prefers the fantasy world over uh, the real world that she is I mean like the, the, the fantasy version of it and basically in, in the world of you know the, the fantasy version of the real life she's in um, everybody wears uh, buttons and and, and and she uh, her parents uh, apparently uh, live there her other parents like other mother other father but yeah like what i said just said that the difference is that the, the this uh the people in this uh fantasy world like have bought use buttons uh in their eyes so uh, which is very strange uh, but yeah uh, as happy as a uh, Coraline is uh she uh she soon realizes that uh um she uh she soon realizes that you know um the other mother's uh true nature uh is that she's actually uh, she's actually an evil mother and and, and she uh, literally abuses uh, Coraline so uh, Coraline must you uh, survive you know, the her other mother uh, and uh, and escape it uh, as she realizes that that, that she should have uh, sticked into uh, stick to the real world that so now guys I gotta say happy 15th anniversary to Coraline. Now I know Coraline technically came out in February 2009, so I'm a little late to the party to reviewing this. But the reason why I chose to review Coraline now is because uh, this movie recently uh, came out in uh, cinemas. Uh, this um, last uh, Thursday, uh, I think Thursday, Friday, something like that. Uh, this movie got a re-release in, in, in cinemas of, in, in 3D. Uh, this is basically like a remastered version. Yeah, certain countries, you know, um, this film is playing like in certain countries, like, you know, in the US and in Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong, my, my uh, second home country. Yeah, and I, and being, being the core like fan that I am, yeah, I, w I, I would have been down to see this film in cinemas, but there's just one problem. This movie did not get the release in my country. 
In fact, the old movies uh, don't get released anymore. Um, like minus the the worldwide you know why um re releases with films like Avatar and uh, Titanic. Uh, old movies don't get haven't been getting uh, re released uh, in my country since two thousand twenty two. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember E.T. and Jaws uh, did get re-releases in my, re-released in my country back in 2022, but uh, unfortunately, no, yeah. Uh, and Dune also did get, get a re-release in my country, but that's just, uh, you know. And I also remember uh, Beetlejuice uh, getting re-released, but yeah, sadly, it doesn't happen that often anymore. And, and as, a cinema, as a cinema myself, I really do wish I would, uh, like watch uh, old movies in theaters so that would be awesome i did rewatch a few old movies in theaters but sadly not to like the extent uh, a lot uh, but you know um since your know, Coraline uh, did not uh, get, get a re-release in my did not since Coraline's uh, 15th anniversary re-release i uh, did not uh, uh have in my country i decided to rewatch it myself at home and um pretty much make a review make a review in it uh, to, to be uh uh, on the same line as uh, other reviewers who are uh, reviewing this film for its 15th anniversary we release uh, like uh, Rachel's reviews and Daz's reviews uh, yeah they did the, the, their uh, review of Coraline uh, upon seeing it in cinemas and even certain Letterboxd users too so yeah I so I said you know why not just make a review of it so yeah now yeah um like what i said earlier laika is is probably my, my, my favorite uh animate stop motion animated studio now maybe i will admit that it's not as consistent as uh, art man because i think art man's weakest films are better are not as so you know, bad as laika's weakest films so uh, there are two laika films that i that i uh, personally i uh, don't like uh, everyone knows that i hate the box shows in fact uh Next month uh, for the box shows is uh tenth anniversary. I am going to be doing a, a rant on box shows. Yeah, yeah. I'll be. I'll. I'll finally give you a full explanation as to why I think the box shows is uh, vastly overrated and and like us a worse film to date. Uh, but and then you also got Missing Link, uh, on a film that uh, a film that's completely forgettable. And I couldn't care less about it. Uh, but then you got your. Know, masterpieces like uh, Kubo and the Two Strings uh, which for the longest time was my was not only my, my favorite Leica film but my favorite uh, um, but my favorite stop motion um, animated film of all time and, and it's not the Paranorman well it's not a masterpiece Paranorman Paranorman is still an excellent film and probably Leica's most underappreciated film yet uh, no one talks about Paranorman and then there's probably Leica's you know most well known film Coraline, yeah, this is it, right up there with *A the Nightmare Before Christmas* as some of the most talked about uh, stop motion animated films of all time, and for good reason, uh, too. Uh, and yeah, and I know there are a handful. Oh, by the way, this is this is a thunderstorm right now in my in my this is a thunderstorm in my area. I mean, at least I'm at least I'm safe at home. I don't give a shit. I don't. But yeah, but maybe I guess the uh, thunder is fitting uh, to this uh, review, I guess. But I don't even know if 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 it was actually even heard in the video. But whatever. But anyways, yeah, back to what I was saying. Yeah, um, yeah, Coraline is uh one of the more well known films. But yeah, there are actually a handful of people who say that Coraline is overrated. Yeah, especially with a piece of shit user. Why I'm not going to say his name, but basically someone who I was quote unquote best friends with but bullshit and that uh bullshit uh he hates Coraline so much that he literally put this movie as uh um in his top 10 worst movies in 2009 list and I literally went after him I, I, I was literally pissed off like I was so triggered because of how much I love Coraline like like Coraline yeah does not uh, deserve to be in the worst movies of 2009 list in fact it deserves to be like in, in the best movies of 2009 list but and others would like complain oh it's so it's too it's too serious it's too mature it's it it, it didn't feel it doesn't feel like a kids animated movie like i'm sorry but this is honestly why i can't sometimes like i can't stand kids movies i i i can't stand it when i mean people complain that i people say i have no respect for for animation and that because because i view animation as just a kid genre while i'm reviewing animated film that, that isn't for kids you know yeah this, I, I don't 
I personally think that Coraline it is not for kids. I guess it's suitable for kids, but kids are going to be scared shitless uh, with this film. Uh, and I feel like that's why people, some people say that Coraline is overrated because uh, it's too, it, it, it's not you know the goofy kids distraction movie that that you know, that that, that uh, you know um, animated films of today are. Uh, but you should respect the fact that you know animated films like this exist uh, and this. Uh, should be a prime example of, of you know why uh, animation uh, should be viewed as a, as something for everyone. Hey, sorry about that. Um, it wasn't because of the thunder. It was just I just took a sip of water. My my throat was drying. But anyways, uh, but anyways, yeah. Back to what I was saying. Yeah. Um. And yeah. So yeah, Coraline for a long time was it was certainly in in my top five favorite um stop motion animated series of stop motion animated films of all time and this was even though Kubo was my favorite like a film for the longest time Coraline was a close second uh, to me but after I rewatched Coraline my I actually love this film even more now yeah I absolutely adore this film even more than than, than I uh, adore this film even more than, than I initially thought and yeah up to the point where I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this right now. Kubo and the two strings, like get off uh, the the take, take your your crown off uh, because <coughs> sorry, take your crown off and give it to Coraline because <coughs> sorry, Coraline is the new queen of stop motion. I guess Kubo can still be king of stop motion, but Coraline is queen. And in my in my point of view, a queen is more powerful than a king. Yeah, but you know. It's just me. Um, yeah, sorry, Kubota Two Strings, but you're no longer the best like a film and the best stop motion film of all time because, yep, guys, Coraline is now officially my favorite. Uh, my favorite. Oh, wait, actually, I just realized. I think uh, Guillermo. Oh, del Guillermo uh, del Toro's a uh, Pinocchio. Uh, yeah, that that's like another stop motion animated film that, that I uh, called my favorite that, uh, uh, my favorite stop motion animated film of all time. But actually, actually, you know what? Yeah, screw it. The uh, Coraline really is uh, now my favorite stop motion animated film. But what I meant to say, what I meant to say is that Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is actually my was actually my true favorite. Like I, I put Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio over Kubo and the Two Strings. But yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Coraline is uh, now officially the, the the best like a film and the best uh, and the single greatest uh, stop motion animated film of all time. Yeah, this movie is is perfect. Uh, it is uh, an absolute masterpiece. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is one of the this is um, one of those types of animated films that seriously don't get made anymore today. It, it, it's it is an animated film that's dark, serious, grounded, mature, gritty, etc. Uh, it, it 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 treats its viewers like they're intelligent, like they're smart, and it doesn't try to distract kids uh, in every single way. Uh, yeah. Um, and Holly. Now I'm sure you you all know uh, my beef with your know, bad animated movies today. Like they all have like one thing in common that they just be uh. Basically, be uh, uh, Hollywood would basically just treat animation like they're just for kids. That, that a lot of their animated films are just you know dumbed down, not just to be uh, kid distractions. Uh, their, their their sole purpose is just to distract kids and torture parents, but they don't really. They're actually not very um respectful uh, to um to the art of animation. They pretty much underestimate what animation truly is, but. But Coraline is a movie that that actually defines what animation truly is. Uh, but, but yeah, what animation uh, tr truly is. Uh, and I'm sick of people just you know telling me, eh, but chill, Frozen. It's just a kids animated film. It's it's not made for you. Um, and it's and shit, it's raining. But oh well. Um. But yeah, Coraline is one of those animated films that the animation industry today needs to take notes from. Uh, now, what makes this better uh, than you know, uh, Kubo? Um, what makes this you know, um, better than uh, Kubo and the Two Strings? Uh, I'm sure you may be wondering. 
Well, yeah, you know, I love Kubo because of its, you know, uh, visual style and its, you know, action, um, and its, you know, um, action packed. Uh, but to me personally, I think uh, Coraline uh, comes down to one element that, that, that made me overall realize that this film is better than Kubo. It's Coraline herself, the main character. And to me personally, I think Coraline, uh, the, the, just how good the, this main character is, uh, this uh, male, ca- this main character is, uh, I think Coraline herself is what really carries the film for me. Uh, she is such a compelling and reliable protagonist. Yeah, she. I, I'm sure uh, kids today would relate to Coraline just um, not, not liking uh, the real world, not, not accepting uh, reality and, and wishing to live in, in a world of fantasy. Uh, yeah, similar to like, but I'd say more in, in the lines of Ready Player One, you know, with where like, characters want to live in virtual reality, like want to live with technology. Yeah, it's kind of like, in fact, uh, Ready Player One and, and Coraline uh, does have the one thing in common, something in common, and, and you already know what it is, so I'm not going to spoon feed it to, to, to you uh, like that. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, but Coraline is it, it, just such a compelling character. It just because of just how much I. I just because of how because of how much I love Coraline, I uh, like the, the movie all the more becomes more engaging. That's actually one of the ways in how I engage with movies. I get so invested in the main character. I guess I can get invested. With, I I can get invested with films uh, by you know just how enjoyable they are and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, Coraline herself is so. Uh, it, it's just something else. It, it, it's, it, this is one of those movies where I get so compelled with it. I get so engaged and, and invested in it just by its being character, just being just so good. Um, and Gorilla is, is, is beyond uh, adorable too. Like, yeah. And as for the other characters, yeah, the other mother is one of the greatest animated villains of all time period. And this, there's a reason why she's considered uh, to be one, one of the most uh, iconic animated uh villains uh yeah and and other mothers the other mother is uh freaking attractive not gonna lie i I think she's hot yeah um and the others the other side characters do a great job in in being supportive to Coraline's journey like the the black cat and and, and yb for example and you 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 also got the incredible voice performances as well dakota fanning gives her career best performance uh by far as a title character yeah better than any of her live action roles. Uh, yes, um, yes, uh, yeah, sorry about the super loud thunder. Yeah, there is a, like what I said, there is a thunderstorm in my country, but yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, where was I? Yeah, Dakota Fanning is incredible. Even, even though I love her in films like, you know, Equalizer 3, yeah, this is uh, her peak performance, yeah. And uh, also Terry Hatcher, she also deserves credit for her amazing, incredible voice performance as the the, the other mother. Uh, shame that uh, Terry uh, Hatcher uh, went on to to play to voice a character in Planes. Yeah, I haven't forgotten that Terry Hatcher was also in Planes. Maybe I could be wrong, but yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, and screw Planes. Uh, yeah, screw that film. Uh, yeah, the animation is absolutely breathtaking, showing the boundaries of what animation can be. Not just with, with, with the stop motion uh, designs, but the creativity, the backgrounds, and details as well. Like, for example, how uh, the, um, the, the, the real world stuff, uh, it, it, it shows how bleak uh, the real world stuff is, is you know, designed uh, to be uh, so uh, bleak and, uh, you know... Yeah, to be so uh, bleak and dull, but it, it's really meant to look dull because uh, it, it, it's to convey you know, the, the narrative around it, but that Coraline does not like the real world and she wishes to live in a fantasy, which is... And then the, the, the fantasy world is full of create, creativity and just and just imagination. Um, and yeah, um, and, and yeah, and... Probably my, my, my personal favorite uh, part, the, probably the most gorgeously a- animated scene in this film is um, the, um, how do I say this, uh, is uh, the spider web scene where, where basically the other mother to turns into a spider and she, and she, um, and she, uh, you know, crawls, uh, uh, like she chases uh, Coraline in the, in like the, the, the spider swim and everything's like in, in a void. That is so creative. It's brilliant. Why can't we get more animations like this? Uh, 
even though realistic animation is still my personal favorite animated animation style yeah and and yeah I, I love the story as well it's so engaging and original and yeah it, it, it it's such a unique story it, it's a story that has never been told before um and it has a great message as well that uh message as well to appreciate to be grateful uh that you're alive no matter if you're if, if the place if the world you live in is dull like if, if specifically the area you live you live in is dull and all that shit uh, um sometimes yeah it, it's better to like stay in the real world that then try to uh go off reality uh and also definitely to be careful what you wish for um yeah sometimes uh the the, the, the i mean you can still make your own choices, but sometimes it, you're, you're better off living in a world that stresses you out uh, rather than live in a world that you think is perfect, but then the people around you are evil, like, you know, the other mother. And of course, the, the dark and creepy atmosphere is the reason why this movie is so beloved. It almost feels like a legit horror movie as the film, it basically plays out like a thriller, but it, it, it kind of feels like it comes close to being a horror movie. So yeah, and also yeah, the, the the score as well. Oh man, the score is just epic. I I think the score is, it might be one of my favorite aspects of this film. So yeah. So overall, yeah, Coraline is uh, such a masterpiece of stop motion that truly pushes the boundaries of what stop motion animation can, can become, and it just proves that stop motion really is a a uh, a style of animation, a form of animation that uh, deserves uh, to be uh, recognized for. I already said that this is the best LEGO film and the greatest stop motion animated film of all time, but this is now officially my favorite animated film of, of 2009. Yes, even over Up. Yeah, better than Up. And if you're wondering where I would play, rank this in my best movies of 2009 list, I would say it's at number three, right behind Avatar and Inglorious Bastards. And it is certainly in my top 100 favorite movies of all time list. Yeah, so yeah, happy 15th anniversary to the queen of stop motion. So with that said, I'm going to give Coraline 5 stars out of 5 perfect movies. So also for my review of Coraline, uh, what are your thoughts on the film? Uh, would you agree with me that Coraline is the best like a film or the best stop motion movie ever made? Do you love this movie but you wouldn't go as far as that? Or um, do you think that this movie is overrated? Comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my top 5 best and worst movies of summer 2024. Bye guys.